No. Oh, that's all right then. Yeah. I'll just shut the window. He's just literally started. OK, so uh, welcome to the fourth of our uh, Wednesday webinars. Um, this uh, this event's theme is adult learning. Um, we have a new adult learning guide that's been delivered to uh, Oxfordshire at the moment. So hopefully some of you may have um, seen the guide and that's listing all the courses that we're doing from uh, September uh, through to the rest of the year. Um, also, you can go online. Uh, onto our website, which is uh, www.abingdon-whitney.ac.uk. And uh, on there, one of the selections, one of the options is Oxfordshire Adult Learning for part-time courses. Um, and if you go on there, you'll find all the, the courses listed um, via the website and you can enrol um, through that. So um, I'm going to be joined today by uh, Angela Hales, uh, who's curriculum manager for um, the Oxfordshire Business and Enterprise School and by Sue Funge, who um, is one of the curriculum managers for uh, Oxfordshire Adult Learning. So uh, as we've done in the previous uh, webinars, the um, your entries are anonymous or we see as a question that you kind of pose. And if you happen to want to join the event after it's kind of started, you're, you're happy to do that or you can uh, catch up on a recording and the recording will be on the uh, the Abingdon Whitney website under Wednesday webinars. So uh, I'm going to introduce Angela House uh, now and she's going to uh, say a few words and then we'll move on to um, Sue Funch. So uh, welcome Angela. Thank you, Greg. Uh, welcome to our webinar. As Greg says, my name is Angela Hales. I'm the head of faculty for the Oxfordshire Business and Enterprise School, and um, I look forward this morning to answering your questions um, regarding business management or accounting and um, even sport and professional uh, personal trainers. That's the areas that come under my faculty. Um, so with particularly professional business, we have CIPD courses, so if you're interested in HR, then please give me a shout. Um, we also offer Institute of Leadership and Management courses um, at level three and level five. And we have lots of AAT, that's the Association of Accounting Technician um, courses. And in fact, just been, uh, just won an award for the AAT Large Provider of the Year. So we're very proud of that. And I look forward to answering your questions on that. Um, as I did mention sport, we also run personal trainer courses. So if you're thinking of a career change and looking to do that sort of thing, then uh, please speak to me about that. Thanks very much. OK, uh, and now I'll introduce um, Sue. Yes, hello. Thank you, Greg. Um, yeah, my name is Sue Funge and I'm curriculum manager for Oxford Adult Learning. Um, we offer a, a wide variety of courses, a lot of part time courses. Um, in the evening and daytime on subjects that range from learning different languages from Polish to Russian to French, Spanish, so on, um, art and craft courses, jewellery making, photography, um, good floristry. <laughs> There's an awful lot um, available across the county. Um, we have a base in Kidlington in Cowley. We run courses from Whitney campus and Abingdon campus, but also in external venues such as Blime Hall in Chipping Norton and other places. And alongside those courses, we also offer um, specific courses for carers. Uh, we work in partnership for action, with Action for Carers and we offer a, a number of courses which currently are online um, to support the isolation and shielding of people suffering with COVID-19 or at risk. Um, and we can offer courses for people, particularly if you're worrying about uh, the job that you did have and it's no longer available, um, employability skills retraining, and we can always set up and run bespoke courses in response to need as well. So look forward to any questions. Thank you. <laughs> OK, thank you, Sue. Right, so uh, you've met our uh, participants. We're going to go and see whether we have any uh, questions at the moment. And we have one which probably uh, Sue can, can answer, which is are courses going to be online or are they going to be in person from September? Well, so, OK. If you give me a second, Sue, and then there we go. OK, um, yes, well, um, the um, current circumstances mean that 
a number of our courses will continue online if they are continuations of the course that people were doing prior um, to the summer break. Um, if they're brand new courses, we will be doing a combination of some classroom um, based sessions, but uh, adhering to social distancing rules and all the other measures in place to keep everyone safe and learners will the other learners will be um, participating virtually through links of web web links and so on. Um, but obviously it's a changing a changing thing that we don't know. We're following government guidelines, but that is the situation at the moment. So it's some classroom based learning with social distancing measures and some online learning. Okay. okay. Thank you, Sue. There's another question which is about um, do you need to pay extra materials um, or equipment fees for some courses? Yes, for some of the courses, and that will be clear if you go to the uh, website, it will be um, clear on there whether there are additional material costs for specific courses. And they do tend to be the courses around um, art and dressmaking um, because you need your own equipment to participate in those courses. OK, that's great. Thank you for that, Sue. OK. Uh, and then we we've got a question here about uh, that probably uh, will suit uh, Angela. Um, do we offer professional courses in management like uh, CIPD or um, ILM courses? So let me just uh, line you up. There we go. Thanks, Greg. Yes, we certainly do. So for CIPD, we offer courses at level three and level five at both the Abingdon and Whitney campus. Um, sorry, level five only at Abingdon, level three at Abingdon and Whitney. Um, and the Institute of Learning for Learning for Management, we have um, an online course actually, completely online, um, that runs, uh, I, from memory, I believe it starts just after Christmas, but we can check that on the website and get back to you on that one. Um, but yes, certainly. And we also um, offer degrees in business management as well. OK, thank you, Angela. Uh, and just a, a follow up question. Um, can I do an AAT course in Abingdon? I know you do them in Whitney. Yes, certainly. Um, and we do AAT courses at level two, three and four, and we offer them in all sorts of um, combinations of daytime and evening courses. So generally it's two evenings a week or a full day or more or less a full day. But we also offer a blended option with a company in partnership with a company called Mindful Education, which, which works really well for people who are unable to attend on campus. Uh, very much because it has um, professionally produced videos to to support online learning. OK, that's great. Thank you. Um, and then we'll just have a little look through see if we've got any more questions coming in. Um, yeah, there's a question here that probably uh, we might start with Sue, but it might it might fit with Angela as well, which is um, do you have any courses that as an adult might be able to help me get into university? So I think if we go with um, Sue on that one first, and then if Angela wants to add anything in, we could do that at the end. OK, am I am I live now? Yeah. <laughs> so, OK, um, we we um, I think it probably pro sits better with Angela, certainly in terms of very first stages of considering going back into further education. We can offer courses that are about developing your skills and certainly in the past we've we've looked at putting on courses. We call them the bridging program where it might be that you have an opportunity to access and visit different learning providers and look at what your next step would be. But I think it probably sits more with Angela than it does with me in terms of access to universities, but certainly in terms of confidence, we would we would be the ones that would be um, able to help develop confidence and belief you can do it. And I've certainly watched adult learners follow that pathway and are now social workers and teachers as a result of that initial boost to their confidence. OK. OK. So I'll put you on then, Angela. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Yes, I would agree with Sue. Actually, we do run lots of courses that increase confidence so that um, adults feel they can 
um, go on to study it to a higher level. Um, specifically in um, the Oxfordshire Business and Enterprise School, the ILM and the AAT both will allow you to move towards a degree course. You can complete the level four and go straight to university to do an accounting degree and you will have some exemptions by having that level four. Um, uh, we also run foundation degrees and honours degrees in um, business management and practice ourselves associated with Oxford Brooks. So we're a partner for Oxford Brooks. So you can, in fact, come here um, as an adult and study your Oxford Brooks business degree and have all the benefits of being an Oxford Brooks student, but in a small class um, and having your lessons either online or in class at, at the Abingdon campus. And there are other faculties that run access courses that um, will allow you to go to university. So it's a one year course generally. I'm thinking specifically in the science areas. I know that there are access courses that you can um, join and I'm sure that we'd be able to send information on that too. OK, thanks. Um, just a follow up on that one. If somebody does a degree course with us, do they get a degree? from Abingdon and Whitney College or from somebody else? So they, so it, in in this faculty, they get a degree from um, Oxford Brooks. So it's an Oxford Brooks degree. All the teachers that teach me, including me, are affiliate lecturers for Oxford Brooks and Oxford Brooks um, monitor and verify everything that we do. Everything runs through Oxford Brooks. So it's very much an Oxford Brooks degree. It's just that it's offered at Abingdon and Whitney College. Okay, and there's one other question just as you're on, Angela. Um, uh, which, where is it? Yeah, during lockdown, I've gotten interested um, in, in running my own business. Do you have any courses that um, would help me in start my own business? Uh, it, it may be that um, Another faculty could be more helpful in terms of employer services because they run short courses about setting up your own business, short, sharp courses, which may be of help. Certainly, if you're looking to do bookkeeping and that sort of thing, then we do bookkeeping courses within the faculty that, that would give you a qualification in bookkeeping to enable you to run your own business. If you're just looking for those skills, as it were, and not an actual qualification, then um, employment services will be able to offer. There, there are lots of relevant courses on the website and um, we could certainly send you links that would be suitable for you. OK, that's great. So if you've just joined us, we're on the uh, the fourth of our Wednesday webinars. Um, we the, the, the subject this time is uh, adult learning. And so if you uh, click on the questions uh, panel, you can uh, ask our, our participants any questions about the adult learning courses that are on offer at uh, Abingdon and Whitney College and with the Oxfordshire um, adult learning. So we run a range of courses. We have a, an adult learning guide, which is um, just been published and has been delivered uh, across Oxfordshire. So you may have uh, received a copy or if not, um, it's being delivered over the next couple of weeks. Um, so we're joined by Angela House, who runs the uh, business courses at uh, Abingdon and Whitney College, and by Sue Funch, who's um, one of the curriculum managers for Oxfordshire adult learning um, and this event will also be recorded and put on our website should you wish to uh, to listen to it uh, later so we're just going to go and see there's a question here it probably suits uh, Sue um, and it's about whether or not you can pay for your part-time courses in installments yes um, the answer to that is um, that if uh, it depends on the length of the course, obviously, and I think there's a minimum um, cost before it can be split down into installments, but it's certainly um, for the year long courses and um, the more expensive courses, you can certainly pay for them in installments. So it's always worth asking and we can usually work something out. Yeah. OK, and there's another question probably suits you, uh, Sue. It's uh, I found homeschooling quite a challenge, especially the maths. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, courses that may improve my skills? 
Yes, actually, we uh, have family learning tutors that uh, one of their specialisms is supporting parents to improve their confidence in maths and English. Uh, they tend to be delivered in partnership with schools, so it's quite useful if parents are concerned that they can actually um, encourage their schools to get in touch with us at Oxfordshire Adult Learning and then we can set up um, online courses at the moment for improving confidence, but then face to face in the community or in the school. And they're called Keeping Up With Your Children, Maths and English. And there's just a follow up to that one. Would there be anywhere on the website that would have further information about that? Um, there's a little bit about family learning in general, um, but family learning is like our community learning offer. We tend to set our courses up in response to demand rather than actually having courses set up as we do for our leisure learning courses um, but they'd certainly find some more information about what family learning can offer and in fact actually we are about to set up a course um, about developing confidence for parents in BISTA um, which will be running via the Salvation Army who are offering web links and so on to access an online course from September which is specifically about improving confidence. OK, that's great. Thank you for that, Sue. I'm just having a little look through and see if we've got any other questions coming in. Um, actually, there is one about English for non native speakers, um, which probably uh, makes sense for you to answer that. Sue. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so again, it's um, one of those offers. I mean, certainly um, for people that um, are local to the Cowley, Oxford City area, there are um, ESOL classes um, that run from there ongoing. But outside of that area, we tend again to set them up via community groups or, um, for example, the Syrian refugees in the resettlement project with Cherwell District Council. Um, our family learning tutor set up and delivered ESOL classes in Bista Library and has been since lockdown has been delivering that remotely um, to those specific learners. But yes, again, we can offer courses where they're needed. So it's about get in touch, please, and we'll set one up for you. OK. Uh, and there's a question here probably for Angela. I'm interested in doing a counselling course. Um, do you know who validates your courses? So you're live now. Thanks, Greg. Um, so this falls under the services um, faculty. And um, if I'm honest, I'm not sure exactly which board they use. So I would have to um, find out about that and get back to you. But I certainly know that counselling is an area that's growing um, in the in the college and has an excellent reputation. I've been involved in the recruitment of some of the lecturers for that, and they've been really outstanding with their um with their backgrounds um, in counselling. So I, I know it's an area that that we are very good at. Okay. Um, right. There's one question here. Probably suits uh, um, uh, Sue, and it's around. Let me just find it here. Um, I read somewhere that there are health benefits to doing a part time course. Is, is that true? Yes, absolutely. There's been quite a lot of uh, evidence over the years to show that if you participate in any leisure learning course, that actually there are knock on effects that in, it benefits your health and well-being. Um, and that we um, the, the range of benefits could really be quite broad. Um, but most people find that they develop confidence, um, make new friendships um, and they're out and about, less isolated, which is all good for our mental health. So, yes, there are a number of benefits and there's plenty of studies that evidence that I'm not just saying it, <laughs> that there's plenty of research that proves it can benefit our health and well-being. Yeah. Excellent. OK, thank you. And there's a there's just a follow up question actually on that. Uh, let me just see if I can find it. Yeah, um, somebody had said they'd been on the website and they'd seen something about mindfulness and well-being and is well-being the same as mindfulness? Um, mindfulness is a specific um, part of a, 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 a 
Well, I can't think of the word now. <laughs> mindfulness is a tool we can learn to use to help our well-being. But actually, mindfulness is one thing we can do. We can do other things. We can do yoga. We can do all sorts of other things that take care of our well-being. But mindfulness is a form of meditation, and it's very much about trying to um, help us to manage our negative thoughts that can sometimes make people feel depressed or anxious and so mindfulness helps us to stay in the moment and therefore that's how it benefits our well-being but as I say there are plenty of other genres and um, things that we can do to look after our well-being including nutrition, um, Indian head massage, you know there's lots of different courses we offer actually on those sorts of things as well that are all about promoting well-being. Okay that's great thank you for that. Um, just having a little look through here on uh, a couple of other questions. Is, uh, one that probably suits um, Angela. I'll just have a little read of what they said. So my son's getting his A-level results in a, in a couple of weeks. Talk about not going away to uni now, uh, but I've noticed you do some degree courses at the college. So I yes. wonder if you want to mention a few. Thanks, Greg. Yes, uh, I mean, certainly within our faculty, we do the business management and practice. Um, we also do a degree apprenticeship as well. So that might be worth looking at. And um, there are uh, engine, there's an engineering degree um, being set up to, to start this year with Middlesex University, I believe. And um, also we run degrees out of the farm. These are Oxford Brooks degrees as well. Um, so I, I think it really depends on where your son's interests lie and what his A-levels are um, regarding that. Certainly, the if you have a look online at our RHE courses, there's a specific area for that. You'll be able to see all the ones that are available. And, and I would, if, if he's um, not sure about what he wants to do, suggest that he he speaks to the tutors to find out much more about the content um, and would recommend them actually to young people and and to um, sort of older adults because the classes in, in our HE classes, our higher education classes, tend to be quite small and so they get a lot of support for students who come and do their degrees with us. Um, and certainly in business, we get really good results. Our and the number of students that we get leaving with the first is um, higher than on the main campus. And I think that is around the study support and the assistance that they get whilst they're studying here. Okay, that's, that's great. Actually, is it worth kind of um, mentioning about the, um, you mentioned about the benefits of studying with uh, Abingdon and Whitney College. Is it worth expanding that a little bit in terms of where the tutors yeah, come from it, and how uh, the classes are? So, uh, as I say, the tutors are all affiliate lecturers for um, the universities. So we all, all attend training um, at the universities and work very closely with the, uni the university staff and everything is moderated to the same level as it would be um, if they were studying for their degree at the university campus. So all, all that is absolutely the same. And the really good thing about um, being a student here is, as, as I said, about the amount of support in the small classes, but the fact that you are still an Oxford Brooks student and you can go to the libraries, you can use all the facilities that they've got there. I, I mean, in the student bar, whatever it is, the, all the sports facilities. So um, you are an Oxford Brooks student. So it is really uh, a very positive thing. Um, for young people to be able to continue to live at home, continue with their part time job because we run our degrees in one or two days a week, depending on which degree it is, um, which allows you to work around that. Um, and because we consolidate the teaching all in one or two days, you know that you've got those other days free to study stroke work. Um, rather than perhaps if you're if you're on the university campus, your timetable might be a bit more bitty, different bits on different days, and that tends to be a bit more difficult to work around if you're working. Um, and of course, living at home has cost benefits as well. Um, so lo lots of good reasons for, for coming to the college and um, studying your degree here. OK, that's that's great. Thank you for that, uh, Angela. Um, there's just looking down here. There's a um, question for, for Sue. It's a it's 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 a bit kind of 
open ended, but it's um, I'm terrified of going back into education. Um, should I be? Uh -huh. um, yes, I mean, no, you shouldn't be. <laughs> you shouldn't be terrified of going back into education at all. And certainly um, that's the benefit of our community learning <coughs> offer where we take the learning to the place where you feel safe to access learning and we can um, and ensure that um, it's done in a way that you feel able to access learning and start to appreciate that just because the first time round, maybe education, you hadn't had a very positive experience that can be turned around. And as a mature student myself, as somebody that went back into education in my 30s, I promise you it can work if you access safely um, the start of your journey back into education with tutors that are supportive and recognise the potential, then you can blossom and go on and go back to it, go on to enjoying education. <laughs> okay, that's 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 great. Well, Angela Scott. Thank you for that. Okay. Sue. So uh, we're just going through um, some of the questions that have been uh, asked around uh, the subject of adult education um, on this, uh, the fourth of the webinars that we've uh, we've published uh, under our Wednesday webinar kind of banner. Um, and should you have any kind of questions, just use the kind of uh, panel at the, uh, the bottom right hand corner to, to post them in. And as we mentioned before, we've got Angela Hales and uh, Sue Funge who are participating uh, in today's event. And the end of the event, we will uh, record, we have published the recording on our website under the uh, Wednesday webinar so that we can see that in that form. And so uh, we've got another kind of question, um, which probably uh, is going to work for, um, for Sue. And it's what courses are there for adults at the farm campus? Oh, <laughs> um, um, I actually don't know that we have any um, adult courses um, set up. I'm not aware of them, I'm afraid they've, oh, not, okay. they've not been set up through Oxford Adult Learning. There probably oh. are adult courses, but not from our faculty. Um, okay. So, In that case, probably I'll I'll just answer a couple of those because I think okay. I know. Yes. I know the answer on a, on a, Thank you. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. Um, so on the uh, on the uh, Commodore's Farm campus, there's a number of courses that uh, relate to um, animal care. Uh, we also have courses uh, that relate to dog grooming, um, and also some of the uh, the horticulture courses are, are, are based at Commodore's as well. Um, so within the uh, adult guide that, that's gone out, the uh, the campuses are noted. Um, but if you go on the uh, on the website uh, and you make a selection, you can select there the courses that are specifically to do with the campus. Uh, and what you'll find with the uh, with the common lease courses is that they tend to be around the subjects that the faculty kind of covers. So anything to do with with farming, horticulture, agriculture. Um, are based at, at commonlys in that kind of form. OK, so hopefully that, that would be useful. And they, the, the website is uh, abigdon-whitney.ac.uk. And then in the subsection, you select part time uh, courses and you then get a list and you're able to pre-select from that list in that kind of form. OK, um, so there's another question. Now this might, and I'll probably pose it to, uh, to Angela first, mm -hmm. though I know it's not in your faculty, um, but it's I'm working as a part time hairstylist. Do you have any training courses at uh, at college? So uh, do you want to have a go at answering this one? And then if not, I can I can dip in and uh, answer or add anything to it. Yes, thanks, Greg. Um, I, actually, I do know a little bit about this because I used to work in that faculty. Um, and uh, certainly there are hairdressing and barbering courses part time for um, people to join at the Abingdon and Whitney campus. Um, and the great thing about those courses is literally within weeks of starting your course, you're working on on real clients. So uh, the teachers are so good that they're, they're people who work in in the vocational area. Um, and have lots of experience and 
you come away with not just those hairdressing skills, but all those extra people skills that really help you with building your business um, or building your client base if you're if you're working um, in somebody else's business. So it's a really good opportunity to pick up skills and um, sort of just just change you change your life actually. Uh, and in fact, you know, Sue said that that she returned to education in her thirties, and actually so did I. After I had my family, I returned to um, a, a college and studied uh, beauty, so, and, and ended up opening my own um, beauty salon. Um, before I came back into education and teaching. But um, yeah, it really gave me an opportunity to find work part time and full time, working from home, going out mobiling. It's a great opportunity, great area to, to get qualifications in. OK, thank you for that, Angela. Um, there's another question which is probably uh, is, is going to suit um, Sue. Um, because it was something that um, somebody's picked up on and something you mentioned earlier, which was um, can you give me any more information about the courses for carers? Oh, OK. Um, so you're live now, Sue. So. OK, thank you. Yes, um, we will be um, launching the new programme for the carers um, package. It's called a carers journey, actually. And um, we had a meeting this week with Action for Carers to discuss what we wanted to do. So from September, um, we will have back on the website, we do have a a page on the Abingdon and Whitney College website for carers programme, a carers journey, and there will be a list of courses being set up to access. But the types of courses that we offer for carers is the practical ones about looking after your loved ones safely, moving and handling without injuring yourself or them, maintaining their dignity at home and also some practical skills around first aid. Then we do a number of courses It's about giving you time out. Um, so, for example, there are courses like on creative writing, um, building resilience, um, self massage, learning to a bit of mindfulness and so on. And then we're also offering um, short courses on managing being a carer to sort of hold on to your own self-worth and recognising you. It's a, an all consuming role. And it can be really difficult not to um, lose yourself in that role of putting yourself on hold while you're caring for someone else. So we have courses that are around sort of supporting you, managing that journey and that you don't lose yourself. And we finally we offer um, uh, a six week course on managing life after the loss of a loved one. Um, and it's all done in partnership with Action for Carers. So, yes, that's the kind of range of courses and they will be being launched soon. We're just in the final stage of deciding exact orders and dates. Okay. And so am I right in saying that, that that information, once we've decided on those courses, will be on the website? It absolutely will, yes. And also Action for Carers will be using their networks to also send it out via their Care Matters magazine and contacting carers through their network. Um, but as I say, it's something that an initial I should also say that we're definitely they will all be online, certainly until Christmas, because carer, carers particularly need to ensure their safety. And we found that actually we did a sort of pilot of running online courses between um, May and we've just finished them and they were very well received um, and it seemed to support carers very well while they're probably more isolated due to the lack of additional staff and support services visiting due to COVID-19 so yeah. OK that's uh, that's great thank you for that Sue. Um, okay. Just a, a, another question it's it's not related to the carers uh, one but it, it fits into your kind of bracket. Um, okay. Someone said I noticed in the adult learning guide that the uh, the languages um, have a lot of different kind of levels yes. in terms of doing a language. C could you could you kind of give a general explanation of how that works? Yes, I mean they they I think it takes um, it, a number of years to go from being an absolute beginner, not knowing a language at all, um, and uh, there's an initial uh, eleven week course uh, which then goes on after the Christmas into the summer term um, for a progression of being a beginner, and then you go through a journey of becoming an improver, an intermediate, higher intermediate, to the point that over each year you get to the point where you're hopefully now becoming fluent in the language. Um, so each programme past the beginners um, stage, they're all one year long, 33 weeks um, in total as you move through and up into 
benefiting from becoming more uh, proficient at the use of a language. <laughs> Okay, that's that's great. Thank you for that. Uh, okay. So it seemed easier to kind of keep you uh, live yes. and ask the question rather than uh, 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 swap back. Okay. But I'll uh, I'll I'll put myself live for a second there. Um, thank you for that. Um, and so as as Sue mentioned, any information on that kind of uh, carers uh, project will be uh, uploaded onto the, the the website when that becomes finalised. Um, and it's probably worth noting that on the uh, the website there are information about our full time courses, um, any professional courses that we run, such as the CIPD, the ILM courses, um, as well as the the part time offer through Oxfordshire Adult Learning, um, and also the range of degree courses that that we we offer, and and those are listed. They can be filtered. So the website's a very good. Uh, source of information to be able to find the relevant uh, courses that you're interested in. And if you have specific questions about a particular course, there's always the inquiries at abingdon-whitney.ac.uk, um, which will go to our inquiries uh, team or our admissions team. They can ask any specific questions. And also for a lot of adult learners, they prefer to talk to somebody in, in person, so you can uh, you can give us a call. Uh, on the uh, the phone, should you need to. Um, so I'm just having a look through back at some of the questions at the moment. There's one more about. Um, let me just have a look down here. Yeah, it was about the CMI courses, um, so it probably suits um, Angela. Uh, and it was it was very general. What, what kind of CMI courses do you do? So I'll just put you live. Angela. Thanks, Greg. So um, specifically CMI, we don't run any Chartered Management Institute um, qualifications right at this moment. The ILM um, qualifications are, are similar uh, and in fact the, the um, modules covered are very similar between the two um, and so if you're interested in that type of leadership management type qualifications you can do that. The degree apprenticeship um, that we offer does, um, it is run in conjunction with CMI so that that specifically, it, that three year degree apprenticeship um, on the BA honours type course is something that could be considered if somebody was looking at that type of qualification. Um, and ju just on that, it's worth mentioning how a degree apprenticeship works um, in that you have to be employed first to do that. Is that right? Yes, you do. That's correct. So you do have to be um, employed in a role that's that's taking you towards that um, management uh, leadership type um, of job um, and, and you have to have the support around you. It is um, it's a really good course, I have to say, uh, for that. And we've got staff within the faculty who are doing their degree apprenticeship with the CMI. It's, it's um, a really good offer. So you're studying one day a week, um, continuing to work. And the assignment work that you do is based around your job and um, uh, issues and difficulties that you might have in your job and how you might resolve those. So there's one big piece of work in your final year that is a work based project absolutely based around um, a, a particular problem that you're interested in and that would help your employer as well. So it really is a, a good option for both students and employers. OK, that's great. Thank you for that, Angela. Um, I'm just going to have a little look on the, the questions as one uh, and it probably uh, this this question probably suits um, uh, so, um, and it relates to the adult learning guide. There's some courses in there that talk about the Oxfordshire Learning Network. Oh. Um, and somebody just says, I'm interested in the OLN courses. So um, do you want to kind of um, just, just explain a little bit about the Oxfordshire Learning Network then, Sue? Uh, the Oxfordshire Learning Network is actually um, a network made up of all the partners who are interested in accessing adult learning for their different um, groups that they work with. So it actually isn't a course as such, although we have subcontracted provision that is also funded through the Oxfordshire Learning Network 
funds. So community groups can apply for funds to actually con continue to develop, um, <coughs> deliver their courses in the community. But the network itself is we welcome any members to come who are interested in um, any form of adult learning. So we, for example, in our partnership, we have the Local Enterprise Partnership is a member of the OLN network. We have the district councils and housing associations and so on. So it's not actually courses, it's more a network to actually help us to reach more adults in the community and take learning to the communities where there's most need. OK, um, just to add to that, because I think actually in the adult learning guide, it does yeah. suggest that there's one about oh, uh, sorry, I've just funding yes. the project management. That's that the, the two courses that are in there are specifically for people that may be interested in applying for yeah. the subcontracted um, the, the project uh, funds that we have. So if they're already a constituted community group who have access to a group of people that would benefit from learning, they can apply for this money and it is recommended that they do those courses that are advertised in the brochure. You're correct. Yes, yeah, sorry, Greg, I missed that bit. <laughs> so it is, it's about you. Yeah, they go on this course to find out what's involved in applying for the funds and what processes they have to go through to be able to run an OLN project. And there are two courses that help and support them learning all of that information. That's great. Um, there's uh, another question, a completely different subject, but but I'm sure you'll be able to answer these. Do we do any courses to do with them, um, sort of uh, DIY? Oh, DIY. Um, well, we have plumbing uh, that uh, runs. Um, and again, I'm not aware of any others. I, I I mean, I should, I suppose, say that, you know, whilst we try and know what everyone is putting on across the county, my my patch is north and west, which um, for the adult learning and we don't have any DIY set up in the north and west, but I do know that there is some in Abingdon for the plumbing courses and there may well be some more in the city, but uh, I can't give more information about that, I'm afraid. <laughs> That's OK, I'll, uh, I'll I'll add in. OK, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just as, as Sue mentioned, uh, we do do a number of uh, plumbing courses. We also do some carpentry and joinery courses that are based at um, the Whitney campus, um, as well as, as, as she mentioned, some DIY courses in plumbing uh, on the Abingdon campus. Um, for the full course listing, if you go to the website and look at the part time courses option, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see all the courses that are, are listed there. And very often courses because of a printed document, the adult learning guide that we 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 produced and is is it's been circulated as we speak. Um, that is only a moment in time. So often courses that are <coughs> are brand new will go on the website because we can't kind of um, publish that that. Uh, guide across Oxfordshire uh, more than sort of once a year. So any new courses, any courses that we're looking, uh, any slight changes in, in course courses, the, the information on the website is, is far more current and uh, and up to date. And as I mentioned in, in DIY, there's there's a few that are linked to both the Abingdon and the, um, the Whitney campuses in that kind of form. So we'll just have a little look and see if there's a couple more questions. Um, there was one about um, payment. Let me just see if I can find it on here. Um, no, actually, I think it wasn't that. It was, it was to do with um, GCSE retakes um, and whether we, we offer those for students. Um, so I don't know, potentially Angela, if, if I'm not sure if you can answer this one, but um, we'll see whether you can. And if not, I'll, I'll kind of dip back in. So it's about um, it's about retaking GCSE English as a student. OK, thanks, Greg. So um, certainly we are able to offer GCSE English and maths retakes to students. Um, and we offer them to students who come to us with a grade three um, in their results. So I know all the students are eagerly awaiting their results in the next week or so, a um, couple of weeks actually, for their GCSEs. And um, 
uh, that we'll be able to let them know um, when their GCSE classes and that sort of thing is, are as part of a study programme. So normally GCSE English and Maths are offered part, as part of a vocational study programme. We do also offer um, English and Maths for GCSEs for adults as well. Um, so I know that, that that's available basically to whoever wants to take their GCSE. Right. Okay, um, there's another question. Oops, no, actually, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll skip that. I'm not quite sure what the, how the questions kind of come in, so I won't ask you that one. Um, there was just something else ar around the um, the ILM. You mentioned an ILM course. Uh, who or what is ILM? So Institute for Leadership and Management. Um, it's nationally recognised um, and, and, as I say, has parity with the sort of C Chartered Institute Management um, type of courses. Um, and this year, for the first time, we're running it entirely online. It ran almost entirely online for the last two years. And the feedback we got from the students was that, in fact, they were very happy with that and would like to continue with a full online course. So, so we're giving that a go. It's actually um, taught by the head of our learning IT department, so Mark Breeden, and we have fantastic feedback of, about his teaching online. Of course, should be good, he's head of that whole department, but it is um, really, we do get excellent feedback on that. And so, um, yeah, definitely recommend that to people. It's suitable for people, it's a level three course. It's fairly short, I believe 12 weeks. It's suitable for people who, um, are either in sort of first line management or looking to to get into that type of role. OK, that's great. Thank you for, uh, for that, Angela. Um, I'm just having a look through here. There was one. Uh, actually, it relates to some of the, the costs and some of the courses, but I don't know whether that might um, suit Sue. It, it was just about some of the courses seem quite expensive. Are there discounts available? Um, so, so I can answer for the courses in my faculty. Um, so there are learner loans available for level three um, qualifications and those like, like a loan that you would get if you were going to do um, a degree, you don't pay back until you're earning a certain level. Um, so they're very popular. Um, and we are able to spread the cost of the more expensive courses. Actually, I think probably all the courses in, in our faculty over the, the time for the course that the course runs. So it's definitely worth speaking to the finance department about that sort of thing. OK, yeah, thank you for that. Um, I don't know whether did, um, did Sue, did you want to kind of uh, pitch in on any of the uh, on, on that? Because I, within the part time guide, we have a section which is is around reduced fee. Did you want to kind of say something about maybe what the reduced fee, um, you know, who it involves or who's eligible for that? So I'll uh, just lie, Sue. OK, um, yes, again, this is something it's about making contact and inquiring, really, because it can be dependent on people's individual circumstances where they're, they're already um, on some sort of benefit, universal credit or um, long term disability allowance. I'm not sure what that's called in the, the latest benefit names that there are for everything. But certainly if people are concerned about the cost of the fees, it's worth inquiring because there are different ways that we can help them to manage whether they are eligible for discounts um, or so on. It really depends on individual circumstances. So I'd encourage them to get in touch. Yeah, OK. Thank you for that, Sue. OK. Ooh. Wait a minute. I'm just going to swap you back to, so you're, uh, and as Sue kind of mentioned on that, if if you want to kind of uh, give our our um, admissions team a uh, a phone call on that, it's oh one two three five two one six four hundred, um, and as Sue mentioned, because the reduced fees are elig the eligibility criteria for the reduced fees is actually quite complicated. Um, what we tend to do is, is suggest people uh, talk to the admissions team to see whether or not they're eligible for that. But often if somebody's in receipt of some kind of benefit, then the, um, the reduced fee can be applied. But the easiest thing to do 
is either to uh, to ping an email to inquiries at abingdon-whitney.ac.uk or to um, to telephone on 01235 216 um, So we're getting towards the end of the, uh, the, the webinar. We've got about kind of 10 minutes to go. As I mentioned uh, previously, this will be, uh, this is being recorded and will go up on our um, website as a, as a recorded event so that you could you can skim through and, and see what um, what kind of subjects <coughs> and questions and answers were uh, were, were posed uh, during today's uh, webinar um, as I mentioned this is the, um, the fifth one I think that we've done and we've we've got them running towards the uh, the end of, of the summer I think the next one is um, around the theme of, of pre-clearing because uh, the A-level uh, results will be out on the 13th and the um, GCSEs on the following week on the 20th. Um, and the college will be offering support services via the online uh, facilities that we have um, as, as we move into uh, the, um, the results for both A-levels and GCSEs. So uh, just looking down a couple of last kind of questions. Um, one maybe for Sue, I, it, it's very vague, uh, but it's, it just says, do I need to attend all the lessons to complete a course? Um, and I guess taking into account COVID by uh, by actually kind of um, going to lessons, that could be quite open to interpretation anyway. So I'll, uh, I'll put you up soon and see if you can uh, just shed any more light on that. Okay. okay, thank you. Yes, um, obviously we'd like to encourage learners to attend, whether it's remote online learning or in the classroom for every session, but we also understand that adults have lives outside of uh, doing their courses and they may not be able to attend everyone, but they will all have an individual learner record where the tutor will support them achieving their particular goals, what they want to get out of the course. And it is completely possible to achieve um, the, the outcomes of the course without necessarily attending every single session. And in fact, we can have an opportunity where the tutor can set them some independent study if they want to. It depends on the topic. But uh, as I say, you know, we'd encourage everyone to come every week, um, but it's not compulsory and they can still achieve um, the course. Is that okay. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's, that's a good answer to that question. There's one more which, which probably again uh, sits within in your kind of remit, um, which is, do you know whether the cookery courses are going to be online? Ah uh, yes, um, they were one of the um, ones we weren't sure whether we could. So we asked our tutors and they are willing to give it a go. They think it's possible to actually offer online cookery. So yes, in the short term, we're going to um, offer cookery online. Um, but there may also be some cookery that will be delivered um, in the classrooms. But again, following social distancing rules, it's going to be a small number of learners. So it's probably got to be both. Um, that some's accessed remotely and some in the classroom as well. OK, thank you for that one. OK. Right, so um, so we're just coming towards the uh, the end of this uh, webinar. We've got uh, time for a, a couple more kind of questions. Um, so if you if you just fill in the, the little Q&A uh, section at the bottom of the uh, the screen uh, and then we'll uh, do our best to, to answer them as uh, as efficiently as we can. So um, next week's um, webinar is around the, um, the pre-clearing um, because the A-level results will be uh, will be uh, coming out shortly and that will be hosted by uh, Rebecca Philbrook who's our head of uh, higher education. Um, so if you have any questions that, that might relate directly to, um, to degree courses to clearing in general, to UCAS, um, please tune in next week and you'll be able to, uh, to to pose those questions at that kind of moment in time. So we're just running through the last kind of few um, and there's one just having a look here that relates, I think, to actually probably Angela could answer this one. Um, it's it's kind of it's it's very general. It was just that um, somebody noticed that we've got 
the uh, Middlesex University um, as one of our kind of partners, as well as um, Oxford Brooks. So I don't know whether you could kind of say what kind of uh, anything it shed any light on that in terms of what what we do with Middlesex University. Angela. Thanks, Greg. Um, a, a little, um, I, I can talk about it a little. We're certainly very pleased to be partnered with Middlesex University. This is a new partnership for us that's um, starting. And I know it's the technology department that have partnered up with them. Um, I would need to check the name of the actual course that they're running, but I think it's an engineering based um, degree course. And um, I know that they're very excited about it and uh, certainly if you if people get in contact with the um, department with the faculty they'll be able to give them a lot more information and they'll be able to talk to the tutor about what the course entails. Okay thanks Angela. Yeah and, it, and just to add to what Angela kind of said so all the degree courses are, um, are on the website um, including kind of uh, contact details of tutors where uh, where applicable um, and obviously the applications for degree courses uh, is, is through UCAS. Um, we will have a clearing opening soon and um, we'll have staff available who can talk about that um, and the options of the, the courses that we've got uh, available. Um, but for a full listing, if you go to uh, www.abingdon-whitney ac.uk um, and on the home page you can pre-select from uh, school leavers so our 16 plus kind of program from our professional uh, courses such as the ILM CIPD um, from our part-time courses which uh, lists all of those that are available across Oxfordshire and also on there is the uh, the apprenticeships uh, section where um, we are offering far more apprenticeships than we have done in the past. We've got a brand new uh, centre launching in uh, in Bista, which will be uh, open in February. And again, the information uh, on the website gives you um, information about the new centre in terms of the new stores. So if you happen to go onto the website and then click the little burger menu and click news, you'll find the new stories. Um, including a scheme that we're working with the government called the Rebound Scheme, which is encouraging colleges to work with uh, local employers and the local community to um, allow the economy to rebound from any hit that's occurring due to, uh, to COVID-19. And on there, there are a number of videos from our uh, Vice Principal, uh, Matt Phelps, which explains about some guarantees that we're offering to um, HE students, to some students on apprenticeships and students taking up a, a traineeship, which is something offered just before you do an apprenticeship. Um, so as we, we run down, I just wanted to thank Angela Hales and Sue Funge for, uh, for their participation uh, in today's uh, webinar. As I mentioned, it's been recorded and it'll be on the website um, should you have tuned in late, as it were, and want to uh, catch up with some of the questions that might have been posed earlier uh, in the event. Um, and as I mentioned, the, the website is a good port of call for, for information. If you prefer to talk to somebody in person, you can uh, phone our admissions team on 01235 216 400. I should be able to memorise that by now, but I haven't. Uh, or go to the, uh, the inquiries at abingdon-whitney.ac.uk um, and that will go straight to the admissions team. For any questions due to the, the reduced fees, it is very specific. So what we generally uh, suggest people do is to phone up and, and talk in person because the questions are, are far more confidential and you probably don't want to just put that you know, in a general kind of email to inquiries at. So uh, hopefully you've, you've found this uh, webinar interesting. Again, thanks to Angela and uh, Sue for uh, for that participation. And if you join us next week at the same time, uh, you'll find uh, Rebecca Philbot um, doing the, the themed one around pre-clearing. So again, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us today and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much.